Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and I am here in Kingston, New York at the MTD shop. We're going to be checking out some bases, and we might be walking away with something. Let's do this. This is Indian rosewood that somebody, I guess, let go in the Everglades, and it's an invasive oh, species. Wow. <laughs> oh. So they cut it down and burn it. That, that's interesting. Yeah, the, the fact that they burn it and don't just like sell it to guitar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, equally as dense, and it's actually harder than regular Indian rosewood because the tree grows slower in Florida because it's not as hot as it's like typical environment. Interesting. Yeah. Biggest issue we have is not being able to get parts steadily. So we've got like 30 bases a year to assemble because we don't have parts. Um, about 99.5% of the customers are quite okay with it because mm -hmm. they understand. Yeah. And the companies that we're waiting on from are, yeah, they're just desperate as we are. It's yeah, it's like not, there's not no malice or anything right. like that. It's just we're all in the same get stuff. You know? yeah. um, it took eight weeks to get a shipment of switches from the Port of Long Beach to San Luis Obispo. Wow. You could walk there. Four or five times faster, <laughs> but you can't get stuff unloaded. Um, our import shipping from China used to be 32 days door to door, now it's 75 days. Wow! And the cost of a container has gone up to about 20 grand a container. Speaking of the uh, the import line, so I know it was originally out of Korea. Right. What was the shop that you used out of Korea? It was Rira. Rira. Closed and their production switched to Indonesia, which I wasn't happy with. Mm -hmm. And we ended up finding a couple of really good shops in China. Um, they had a pretty long and decent relationship with them, too. They were small, we do, really fast, but they've they have also been, been in this for you know, a huge number of years. Yeah, it's a whole. I mean, it's their sons are taking over now, and that's how, you know. Um, and they do really good quality work. They work for a lot of people. What, um, if you don't mind me asking, what triggered the, uh, the, the sale of the Gibson? What did you want to... Brain damage? No, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, we were back ordered. We, we were back ordered for over two years. We, we had promising 50 back orders. Wow. We were promising like a way to streamline that. Yeah. And still keep orders consistent. I couldn't... I didn't have any financial capital. I could not, didn't own a house, you know, nothing I could put up to raise money. 
And so after talking to our accountant and a few other people, Gibson at the point seemed to be somewhat benevolent. And they offered to set up a, uh, a bigger factory and help us get production going. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like a good idea at the time. Hindsight, of course, is everything. But other than that, uh, that was the only reason we were just so far behind. People would come to MI, they'd come to our shop, they'd order a base, go buy something else and wait for the year and a half to two years, sell that off and pick up the base they ordered from us. There were seven of us in a shop about this size, including a spray booth wow. and a buffing room. Back order. Yeah. 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 And then uh, at what point did you uh, then start that uh, MTV? 94. 94. 93 was a non compete year mm -hmm. after leaving. And 94, I could do it January 1, 94. I could do what I wanted. Cool. We're going to be checking out this MTD Super 5 from back in my studio, but uh, we're going to be picking this up and a twin. Now, uh, from what I understand, MTD does in-house mods for their import bases as well. Uh, this is a stock version, but uh, you want to tell us what kind of stuff you guys uh, do to soup up these bases? Uh, we had Bartolini pickups with a custom Bartolini preamp. Mm -hmm. Hipshot hardware. Hipshot hardware and Dunlop strap locks. Uh, reshield the cavity. Um, every base that we get is set up and adjusted anyway when it comes in. The strings are swapped yeah. to new MTD strings. Frets are checked. Frets are checked. Make sure everything's stable and nice. Yeah. You know, that's the basic stuff. The twin is behind you over there. In the rack. Yeah. Just the parts. Hip shot stuff. Yeah. Instead of knobs. The difference in the preamp is also that it's volume blend. Passive tone that works all the time. Mid-range with a push-pull at 400 and 800 hertz. Stack treble and bass. And the switches are series single coil parallel. Single coil in the middle, parallel up. Nice.
Maple neck, bird's eye board. This is Rose of the Mountain, which nobody really knows what it is. Yep, and we can't find any more of it. So wow. we bought the entire stash from a place in the Berkshires uh, called Berkshire Wood Products. And it, um, we got so desperate, we actually bought the eight inch wide piece that was 10 feet long, screwed to their wall. That was a sample piece. The wood. Yeah. Wow. They had finished one side of it and put it up on the wall to show people. But nobody's ever found the tree again. Oh, wait, big difference. In yeah. yeah. Are these active pickups or passive? Or? They're active. active. There's no buffer in the pickup. The buffer is in the cavity. So mm -hmm. if you played it passive, you would have you almost no input. Right, so right, right, right. So uh, would you say that because the pickups are low impedance active pickups, the effect of the wood is more drastic on the tone? Well, they're more transparent. You can hear the difference. Yes. That was the objective when you and yeah. Bill back in the day started yeah. working together was to try to make something that was yeah. transparent. So it was so the wood, your hands. The same the pickups, the same electronics and hardware on both of those bases. And the only difference in the yeah. tone. Same strings, the same fret wire. Yeah. So get a shot with it. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. It's recording. Okay. Yeah, I maybe mean, this isn't perfectly sanded, so you may end up seeing some scratches and streaks in it, but do you have thinner? Uh, I don't really need thinner for a cherry sunburst. Okay. Works better when everything is wet so that it blends a little better. So was the dye compound already like pre-mixed? Yeah. Those, yeah. This is, you can also buy um, just you can buy powder, powder. and then add solvent. Yellow seems to blend everything. Well, light over dark. Yeah. Typical painting theory. sunburst. Nice. You're going to hand me the epoxy? Yeah. I'll show you what the sealer does. 
Yes, you gotta let it dry a second. Otherwise, it'll run. Uh, well, if yeah, you, it doesn't matter for this. If you let it dry completely, um, it's harder to use this to help blend. And a lot of times, once it soaks in for a minute while it's still not cured, we'll use this clear penetrating epoxy to seal the color. But it also drags it around a little bit and makes it blend better. That's the dark cherry sunburst with the sealer on it. That looks great. Well, that'll do it for our factory tour over at MTD. I'd like to thank Michael and Daniel for uh, having us, and thank you so much for your hospitality, thank guys. Thank you both very much. I really appreciate you making the trip over. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So we're going to be heading back, and we have two bases with us. We're going to check those out back at my house. <laughs> See you all then.